good morning all i welcome you all to our international webinar on introduction to artificial intelligence and machine learning technologies this is the fourth successful program organized by btech first year of our university now i request our dean dr ns shubhashree ma'am to introduce the chief guest ma'am yeah so thank you anu am i audible yes ma'am yeah. yeah thank you anu uh so as uh, told this is our fourth successful uh, program we are organizing and today i am very glad to have uh, dr n krishna kumar here sir thank you sir uh, so before uh, giving introduction i would like to say uh, tamil la sonna konjam nanna irukum nenikiren sollunga madam definitely sir oh kattika madam na enna sonnalum odane odane eth seiringa sir really idu vandu romba engalukku periya bhagyam nan sollanum and uh, we are able to enna solradhu namma vandu even inda oru difficult time la kuda you are supporting us in a very good manner uh, so whatever uh, program or whatever initiative i am just saying uh, uh, sir and the kritika madam immediately kritika madam sonna na okay madam i will talk to sir <laughs> the next day she comes with uh, another big agenda really really uh, thank you sir uh, and uh, i hope aruna is here i don't know aruna madam is here aruna thank you for bringing this uh, uh, team to our you know, was to did to introduce uh, to me uh, really we are privileged sir to have you here uh, thanks a lot uh, so i don't want to wait wait much of time so just a brief introduction about sir sir has got very rich experience so i'm just giving you a just because uh, i don't want to lose the essence of what sir is going to talk right so uh, dr n krishna kumar our uh, chief guest today he has got over 25 years of experience in software design development and delivery in the areas of system software and solutions his current area includes artificial intelligence machine learning iot cloud computing etc he is very passionate about motivating and guiding education community particularly he provides hands on training for students he really he gives the industrial connect to the students he is a skillful architect system and software designer he drive innovation in product he write patents he leads team of architects and engineers at present he is vice president engineering eclio uh, international company in usa he has hold uh, many other positions in various uh, good reputed companies including the wipro in india on to his education side he has got a, he has got a phd in computer science from uh, louisiana state university usa and he is a b triple e electrical and electronics engineering holder from iic bangalore he has three patents four publication and one book chapter to his credit most importantly he is the founder of instagana life he provides hands on training to students through project based learning so our university is very proud to have a mou with igl instagana life Uh, fortunately or unfortunately we started all the proceedings but due to this lockdown we were not able to proceed but i had around eight students and uh, we are motivating them to complete the project at least by june right so this is a brief introduction sir i think i have covered uh, because it was uh, uh, too big i don't want to waste the time on that so please uh, the stage is yours thank you thank you very much uh, yes, yes, thank you ma'am Thank yeah, you, no, ma'am. Instruct uh, everybody. To yeah, yeah. Now I request all the participants to kindly disable your video and mute your microphones. Now, sir, you can take. So, you thank can you. start. Thank you, thank you, Anu, ma'am. Okay. Really appreciate okay. it. Okay. Uh, so, you. first of all, I would like to thank um, uh, Dean, Madam Subhashi, Madam, for giving us an opportunity. Uh, I want to reflect uh, uh, mutual uh, understanding as well as our uh, our our pleasure to. Uh, to serve uh, dr mgr engineering college students uh, through this mou uh, and also congratulations on uh, all of your international webinars uh, though these these are difficult times uh, you are able to pull through online uh, i will commend all of your hard work and and dedication to to serve the students um, so today uh, what we will do is we will take a look at um, as uh, madam indicated it is a webinar on introduction to artificial intelligence and machine learning so i'll start presenting some slides Uh, so just give me a second are you able to see my screen no sir 
Anybody? Yes, sir. We can see. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. It might take a little bit of time because it is uh, over the internet and depending upon your connectivity, sometimes it may take time. So, uh, so basically, uh, when when uh, Madam approached uh, Kritika and I on this webinar, uh, we started taking a look at how do we present this uh, technology. Uh, we know that artificial intelligence and machine learning has been very hot in the industry, very active uh, in in the in the in the in the technology as well as in the academics. Uh, but there are several books have been written on artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, obviously, an hour is, is definitely not going to be sufficient to to cover all aspects of of this uh, great uh, technology. So what we thought we'll do is we'll give you we'll present from the industry perspective uh, what is relevant for uh, for engineers and and, and scientists to to uh, to tackle what kind of problems. Um, so we would uh, bring that perspective to 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 that. So with that, we will uh, we'll start talking about some of the uh, basic concepts of uh, artificial intelligence, some of the key machine learning algorithms that people use, and more importantly, where they are getting used and what type of applications are, uh, are uh, benefiting uh, from this wonderful technology. Because as, as engineers and, and technologists, we would like to see things working, right? I think uh, while uh, Madam and all the professors in your college uh, focus more on the, on the theoretical aspect as well as the the, the subject matter that is needed uh, to bring this technology to bear. Uh, we complement that with providing what is uh, happening in the industry today, uh, what kind of software tools are available, uh, what kind of algorithms are people building, and what kind of problems are people solving. So that I think uh, I'm really grateful to, to, to Dean Madam and the entire college staff uh, to provide that complete picture of uh, uh, academics plus uh, industrial background to, to to students, which is a very essential uh, component uh, for you to to get into uh, learning these new technology. So think of this seminar uh, or a webinar as an inspirational one, uh, and then I will give several pointers to various details that you could go read offline. And then, if time permits, I will also show you uh, one of the uh, popular AI ML uh, software from Google. Um, so we can also take a look at what's available there. So I kind of walk you through certain certain theoretical aspects, uh, what is happening in the industry, and then uh, show you where you can start with. I think that is the bottom line for any one of these webinars. What can I do with it, right? Rather than you know reading some theoretical uh, matter and then uh, not sure what I want to do with it. Uh, so that is the spirit in which uh, we presented this, um, or we came up with this presentation. So our outline, uh, like I mentioned, we will briefly talk about the background. You know, what is artificial intelligence, machine learning? Where did it all start? Where is it right now? And then followed with um, what are the key methods? What are some of the uh, machine learning algorithms? Uh, there are things like supervised learning, unsupervised learning, reinforcement learning. So there are so many terminologies that are being talked about in the industry. So we'll cover some of them and basically talk about how they work uh, in, in real life. And the bulk of the uh, presentation will focus on the applications. You know, why do we need artificial intelligence? Why do we need these machine learning algorithms? How is it helping us? What areas are they are they are they benefiting? Uh, so I picked about some of them. There are a whole slew of uh, technological areas that that you can include. But some other things like automotive transportation, uh, medical field is is an important area where AI is playing a major uh, impact on it or a play in it finance and, and, and then arts and music. So we'll cover some of the use cases. So I think the purpose of that is to kind of give you a motivation uh, in terms of why uh, a student like you should uh, look at this field, uh, learn from your professors, and then master it. And then how are we going to solve some of these uh, real life problems? Because you are the future uh, for some of these uh, real life problems that, that we'll be facing. Um, so once you understand what kind of problems that uh, artificial intelligence machine learning solves, then you'll be e e even more motivated to learn more, and that is how progress can be made. So that's the purpose of this uh, use cases. Then, of course, uh, companies. I mean, though AI and ML uh, started out in, in academics about 20, 25 years ago, uh, now many companies are beginning into it. Uh, some of it, you may be already using it in your day-to-day -day life, but we will talk about uh, what are the companies that are doing a software development work using AI ML, uh, walk through a, a package called TensorFlow. Uh, please keep this uh, word in mind. Uh, this is a very popular uh, AI ML software from Google. It's an open source software. A um, lot of companies are building, are solving problems using this framework. 
so this is what we briefly go through at the end and then most importantly is as a student as an engineering student uh, what is your contribution how are you going to contribute to the what are the various ways that you could come in and learn the subject matter and how can you contribute in this field uh, i think those are the uh, kind of uh, outline for what uh, what we have presented and then of course we'll open it up for uh, for any questions and any follow up all right so background on ai so many people think that ai is is very hot so it must have been done in the last 10 years 20 years right uh, in fact uh, the ai uh, was born 1950s when in dot mod conference was the first conference where they talked about how to simulate uh, the set of instruction that human beings follow how can you teach a machine uh, to simulate it that's how it started uh, but we all know in the in the in that time frame the computers were not very powerful uh, we are barely getting into the science uh, field so it was difficult for them to realize the goal of simulating every human behavior using a machine uh, but that was the beginning of it and then if you think about it in the next 20 years or so 60s to 80 a uh, lot of people tried different approaches of uh, you know mimicking your human brain into into computer software and systems uh, there was limited success uh, but there were a lot of failures uh, that is because the computers were not powerful uh, to to even do a fraction of what a human brain can do so there were lots of ups and downs during that period then came a breakthrough in the 1980s sorry no no the media atam on the pipe can we ask excuse me sir one minute yes i request all the participants to please mute your microphones so that you will be able to hear sir more clearly thank you somebody kiran mahajan sir, you can continue thank you ani madam really appreciate it yeah that that helps with the with the presentation appreciate it so uh, what i was saying was in the late 1980s the very first implementation of artificial intelligence came into the uh, came into the industry they are called expert systems they are based based on rules knowledge and uh, coincidentally my phd thesis was also based on uh, an expert system so the idea was uh, i was asked to build an expert system uh, for an oceanographic uh, problem so at that time there were satellite uh, uh, orbiting around earth by sending oceanographic images of the atlantic ocean uh, to navy department of navy at uh, the united states and the oceanographer uh, were a bunch of scientists and engineers what they would do is they would get these satellite images and manually look at the various aspects in, in the ocean for example ocean currents uh, their speed the position the velocity and uh, their thickness and temperature so many aspects of the ocean currents were were studied manually and they would predict you know what would happen uh, with these currents in atlantic ocean you know a day from now two days from now a week from now what would happen uh, so they were uh, doing all of that stuff in, in manually and as part of my thesis i came up with algorithms to uh, uh, create an expert system so it's a rule based expert system uh, that has the prior knowledge of the the results of the of the of these currents and then push it through these rules and predict Uh, what would happen so this is a huge deal for uh, navy as you know when the when the vessels the ships uh, go around in the in the ocean the oceanic currents are, are going to play a major role in their in their speed and 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 they save a lot of uh, fuel uh, so that is a very very powerful project so i think uh, so ai and the expert system is near and dear to me uh, because that's what uh, i was focusing on uh, in in my in my college days uh, so that was the beginning of i would say uh, a good uh, breakthrough for ai and uh, so but the expert systems were rule based uh, that is not the way our brains work uh, so so the uh, people realize that expert systems have limitations and then they started building what are known as neural networks so the neural networks um, those even about 20 years ago uh, people started offering courses theoretical courses on neural networks and uh, artificial neural networks convolutional neural network these are all different types of networks that were built uh, by understanding how our brains uh, work you all know that our brains are neurons uh, they carry uh, information uh, they they can be triggered uh, they they could be talking to each other they'll be transmitting 
uh, they'll be receiving they'll be, uh, they'll be responding to stimuli so at that time there were a lot of uh, research going on in about the human brain and how our uh, brain can uh, understand data uh, recollect data and how it learns uh, over a period of time uh, through pattern matching as well as uh, logical reasoning so there a lot of uh, brain related uh, research fed into the ai and people started building uh, these type of uh, networks uh, of course i'll show you some pointers to where you can find more information on those uh, but then now uh, machine learning algorithms uh, deep learning which is nothing but a class of machine learning algorithm with the multiple layers of uh, neural networks uh, data science is, is a huge topic these days uh, because uh, we are collecting a lot of data uh, with so many people using different services in, in the world uh the amount of data keeps increasing and and using the data to predict uh user behavior and and help with suggestions and so on uh would would become a very important um, uh, goal of uh, of an ai system or uh, machine learning algorithms so as you can see uh, we have come a long way uh, since 1950s and uh, i would say uh, you as student right now you're really really fortunate uh, you're really living in a fantastic time frame Uh, where uh, some of these uh, techniques and and uh, algorithms and systems are available to you uh, about 10 years ago uh, it was not right i mean uh, things were very very fluid uh, so i would say uh, you are really lucky and uh, also uh, colleges such as dr mg engineering college offers you uh, to this type of uh, wonderful wonderful opportunity to to get your hands on to these type of technologies um, so i would strongly encourage you to uh, to kind of understand more after this webinar and 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 do uh, do more in this area okay so what is the uh, this this slide talks about uh, some overview of machine learning machine learning is nothing but a branch of ai so machine learning is a subset of uh, ai it is a bunch of algorithms or study of computer algorithms that basically uh, allow computer programs to automate uh, through experience um so today a lot of the programs that people write in uh, in traditional computer science uh, they are structured programmatic right you, there is an input they know what to do with an input they do some processing they give you output they do not have take into account the feedback uh, from the from the user um so the study of uh, taking the experience into account uh, is what is known as machine learning and there are three types of learning uh, we'll cover that in a minute Uh, they are called supervised uh, unsupervised and reinforcement learning again like i said uh, these learning algorithms are based upon uh, how our human brain behaves uh, you can also relate to how uh, a child behaves uh, in learning a few things at a very earlier on so some of those things have been uh, factored into uh, building these algorithms and some examples i've given here for example netflix uh, with with all this uh, lockdown in place i'm sure that uh, many of the people who are going to movies are now tuning on to netflix and netflix uh, uses ai ml quite a lot uh, because they know uh, the type of movies that you are subscribing to uh, what you're watching uh, you may be giving some feedback in terms of whether you like that movie or not so all of that user behavior uh, is factored into the into the model and then they propose predictions so let's say use netflix for uh two three months they will come back with uh, suggested uh, movies for you and same thing with the spotify right so uh, whether it is for music or for or for uh, movies uh, the fundamental idea of how to learn the user behavior and how do we feed it into the uh, ml model so it can predict and make some useful suggestions because the whole idea of these uh, of these uh, services is to make sure that you stay with them right that is the whole idea and ai ml plays a major role in making sure that uh, proper predictions and suggestions are made uh, so the the consumer stay with them uh, for a longer period of time so that's about machine learning artificial intelligence like i said it is a very vast scope uh, anything from a rule based system to uh, a, a, a robot that mimics a human being all of that is considered as ai and it's a moving target so one artificial intelligence today uh may not be the same as what we will do 3 uh, years from now so it's constantly evolving and uh, the idea of ai is to apply these learning algorithms 
into solving real life problems so if somebody ask you a question on what is the difference between ai and ml uh, ml is a bunch of algorithms uh, that are based on uh, learning uh, mechanisms that one would implement ai applies them to solve real life problems so that is the way uh, i would characterize it and so that gives you an overview of um, uh, what these two terms are okay in this slide we talk about the machine learning techniques right that we talked about um, supervised learning so here is an example very simple example of what is a supervised learning right so uh, it's a, it's kind of a structured way of uh, teaching a machine or a teaching a software uh, about um, uh, about knowledge right so for example here uh, we have taken some animals we have two ducks and uh, two animals that are not duck so in the supervised learning what happens is you give these pictures to the software you also label them so you kind of classify them so that's why it's called classification algorithms you classify each one of these objects into labels and you create what are known as predictive models so these are nothing but um, uh, a bunch of um, uh, artificial uh, neural networks that contain the information about the object that you have uh, that you have presented as well as the label so so it's very clear uh, for the system that it knows that uh, anything that looks like the top two animals would be labeled as uh, duck and the other two are not duck so so what happens in this learning is you go through a training phase you go through and say uh, you you create a bunch of uh, uh, pictures that that look like duck and then you start labeling them as 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 the name duck and then you also give other anim animals as well and start giving them their names so you train the model so this is a very important step in in machine learning is to train the model once you train the model the the one below that is is the uh, prediction phase the so prediction phase uh, you you've got your predictive model which is trained now you propose a new uh, object so that looks like a duck then it will go through the calculation the ml algorithms and come up with the confidence level and say yeah i have seen uh, two ducks in the past in my training and uh, something is given to me that looks like a duck uh, but it is definitely not 100% matching with whatever was trained but it is closer maybe it is 90% confident uh, that this is a duck so this is how the supervised learning algorithms work and then they would come back with the result saying that yes it is a duck so many of the ai systems today they follow this approach the reason for that is uh the success rate is very 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 high as you can see uh it's a very systematic way of um, presenting objects and the labels learning them training them and then predicting them so the accuracy rate is very high so if you are building an ai system uh that the where your accuracy of prediction is uh, is very 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 important then you need to follow the supervised uh, uh, learning algorithms there is a second one called unsupervised they are also called clustering algorithms uh, the main difference between the two here is uh, you don't provide any labels you just uh, go with the flow with the system and say uh, here are all the animals you do the categorization or clustering by yourself so these algorithms will um, take a look at and make their own guess and say yeah i think the first uh, the one two and the five look like they are they are birds and then there will be a set of birds in the in the, in the cluster of birds and then the other two they'll put them in different uh, different groups or, or or clusters so the advantage of this one is you don't need to go through any proper training uh, the disadvantage is your accuracy may not be uh, very high uh, because the uh, for example when you give uh, a new uh, animal then it's going to tell you that it belongs to this cluster but it's not going to pinpoint and say this is exactly uh, the animal that you presented to me um so but uh, there are uh, use cases where uh, this may be more relevant uh, but it's it's also as you can see in uh, in computer science uh, these algorithms are called the harder problems to solve uh, because you are you are you are asking the computer to do a uh, very unstructured unsupervised way of learning and predicting uh, which is very good for human beings right we as uh, human brains can uh, can do this very quickly and uh, whereas computers cannot do that Uh, so i would say uh, most of the algorithms today in in ai are in the supervised uh, learning category and which is also very simple to to program 
very simple to to train the model and very easy to 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 use it which we will see at the later part of the webinar uh, we, i'll show you an example of how the supervised learning is done uh, using the google software called the tensorflow so if you are uh, excited about ai uh, ml uh, i would say start with the supervised learning uh, this is where uh, you will learn a lot about uh, the learning algorithms and and then the, you will also be excited about getting the results uh, uh, confident results uh, so and then later point in time when you become an expert then you can start looking into the unsupervised learning clustering algorithms and i'll i'll talk about that towards the end uh, what kind of uh, expertise that you need uh, if you want to uh, get into the unsupervised learning uh, technique the third uh, important technique is called uh, reinforcement learning so uh, typically in in webinars like this i i used to tell a, uh, a story or a or a, or a scenario uh, let's say a child uh, you know toddler 2 uh, 3 year old uh, the toddler is uh, is is uh, toddler has been taught uh, to share a particular toy for example uh, so the toddler gets excitement when uh, when the toddler shares the toys with somebody else so think of the agent Uh, as a toddler okay and the environment is your parent or bunch of uh, friends and uh, the what the toddler does is toddler understand the environment so it it gets a state then it does some action so let's say it shares the toy uh, with somebody in the environment if somebody rewards then that is factored into the into the equation so what that means is these intelligent agents uh, they understand the environment uh, of the state of the environment take some action but more importantly understand the reward based on the action so if the sharing was good we used to clap right we used to clap and encourage the the toddler so that information goes and reinforces to the to the child that that is the right action to take right so so that's a classic example that i use uh, that anybody can can follow and say yeah now i get it uh, so the the human being or human brain is used to Uh, predicting or providing action based on reinforcements so we see that in every part of our life not only in the child as you go through in in, in classes like for example when you start a course initially it might look very difficult but then as you go through the subject matter it gets reinforced so the, the teachers are doing a wonderful job in reinforcing those techniques to you that's when you become uh, more and more comfortable uh, in with the subject or the environment and then your actions Uh, are a lot more accurate and 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 desired so so coming back to reinforcement learning uh, these are intelligent agents they understand the environment uh, the state take some action take into account the reward or the other feedback from the environment and they constantly learn from the environment so this is um, this is a technique that is also used uh, i'll give you some examples uh, down the road uh, where um, uh this this is uh, directly you can see the applicability of it uh, but there's a very simple diagram but it speaks volume uh in terms of what this learning technique uh, can do uh, one simple example is computer games right uh, you would have seen uh, lots of computer games uh, where it uh, it uh, it plays with the humans and sometimes it beats the humans and uh, the way it does is um, the chess game for example is a classic example uh, where it uh, it makes a move understands what the uh, the player is doing that is nothing but the reward it learns from it and then takes an extra action so this there is a direct example of um, ai ml uh, algorithm based on the reinforcement learning uh, when i talk about some of the applications uh, you will be able to relate to it but please uh, keep this diagram in mind uh, that uh, in most of the uh, ai algorithms today uh, they they work better if there is a reinforcement based learning Uh, because you are taking into account of the feedback from from the environment itself okay so those are the three um, types of uh, learning we talked about supervised learning unsupervised learning and the reinforcement learning now some concepts concepts of ai uh, we briefly talked about intelligent intelligent agents intelligent agents can be hardware or they can be software they can be systems uh the purpose of that is to correctly interpret external data so the most important thing uh, for an, for an intelligent agent is are you interpreting the data that is given to you properly and uh, if not learn from those mistakes learn from such data and use those learnings to achieve specific goals and tasks so all of that 
you make sure that uh, you are taking the action correctly that you are interpreting the data correctly and then you also need to have some sort of a flexible adaptation so all of that is part of the uh, intelligent agents um, uh, functions i would say and um very beginning when when ai was uh, was in, in its infancy uh, people started building what are known as uh, artificial neural networks a uh, short form is ann uh, in a simplistic way uh, of course if you go through the books ai books uh, you'll see lot more examples of uh, of uh, neural networks uh, but in a simplistic way uh, these are all neurons uh, so uh, you have input neuron and output neuron and then you have hidden uh neuron so basically they uh the the input neuron re- reacts to the stimuli or input from the data uh, that is presented to it then all the information or the knowledge is stored in the hidden layers of the neural network and if the hidden layers of the neural network is more than one then that uh, that is called deep learning so if 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 the hidden layer is just a very simple uh, one layer of uh, of uh, nodes or or, or networks Uh, then they are simple uh, artificial neural networks uh, typically when the layer becomes more and more uh, that's when uh, the the learning algorithms are called the deep learning so you will hear these terms you know typically the question asked you know what is the difference between deep learning sir, and one second one second sir sure. abinash please you are presenting abinash who is that please come out oh, yeah. anu can you see sir uh, screen now yeah ma'am i can see now sir screen is visible no yeah yes ma'am oh. no no just uh, check for that abinash one whether he has come out because last time i yeah, he had a stopped. problem yeah okay okay uh, yeah now you come out and again uh, log into sir screen because last time i yeah. had this problem yeah yeah okay ma'am thank you yeah. madam yes sir yes you can continue sure so uh, is is my screen visible now i just want to make sure and you madam if you can please confirm yeah yes sir it's visible very good very good thank you okay. uh, so basically uh, i was just describing the the difference between uh, machine learning and and deep learning uh, deep learning is a, is 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 a class of machine learning uh, when you have uh, the the hidden layers of uh, network uh, the the neural network if it is multi layered uh, that means you are storing a uh, lot more detailed information about the environment so all these networks they are trying to do they are trying to model an environment right whether it is a self driving car whether it's your personal finance whatever environment that you are trying to uh, uh, apply the ai and ml uh, these these hidden layers will 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 contain that knowledge and and the intelligence and the the, the deeper uh, those those layers of uh, neurons or the, or the nodes in the in the network uh the those learnings are called deep learning so there's nothing magic about deep learning it is a class of uh, machine learning uh, algorithms so what happens is um uh, so I, as i mentioned uh, the construction and the management of these uh, neural networks are inspired by how neurons in our brains work and uh, it is still a fascinating field uh, there's an interdisciplinary field where the brain research directly feeds into the computer science and and then uh, uh, One second, sir. I think your screen is not shared to someone else. Just let me. Sure. Anu. That's uh, visible only. Yeah, there are, are two. Yeah, there are two. Yeah, for uh, actually, yeah. sir, there are two names for him. So pin to the one in which he is not speaking, then it will be visible. Okay, okay, okay. okay. And uh, make sure Anu, you are recording his uh, recording. Uh, no yeah, one yes, else ma'am. is present. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes sir you can continue now. Yes. Sure madam thank you. Thank you for that. So yeah I think uh, uh, like I said uh, the purpose of this webinar is to kind of inspire you and see how fascinating this field is because there is a direct uh, uh, correlation between what is happening in the brain uh, research into uh, computer science and then you will also see in my in the future slides that it goes into the hardware engineering as well. So the modern say, AI system software systems Uh, they model a variation of these ann uh, there are uh, networks called the convolutional uh, neural networks uh, so there are various flavors of this uh, neural networks uh, but they are all based upon uh, statistical uh, analysis and probability theory and all those thing all those mathematical uh, regression technique that we learn uh, they are all applied to uh, 
constructing and and management of these uh, of these networks um, so there is a strong correlation of uh, statistics as well as mathematics uh, theoretical mathematics uh, behind in 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 building these networks uh, building these algorithms um, which also i'll, I'll cover uh, in my future slides if you are uh, super duper uh, good student or brilliant student in math uh, this may be an area that you may want to consider uh, doing further work on um because all of them are um, oh somebody else is also presenting yeah it's saying you no longer are presenting uh, anu madam second sir no one else is presenting i'll make sure i request all the other participants to stop presenting your screen so that uh, sir screen will become visible to you your screen is visible sir now okay very good thank you madam because i got a notification that you are no longer presenting i just want to make sure that it is visible thank you anima yeah okay. it's visible to me okay no problem so you can continue right okay so so let me move on uh, this is an important uh, slide where uh, now we have understood uh, where was ai and ml um, what are the various techniques and how are they built and all the stuff how where are they getting used right so uh so clearly uh, autonomous cars you would have heard about uh, you know autonomous cars uh, being built and people are beginning to use tesla is an example of that self parking cars right that's another a new feature that is coming up in 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 the modern cars uh, you don't need to park uh, you just need to let the let the car park by itself so this is an uh, so we learned about the reinforcement um, uh, learning right so think about a self parking car every time it understands the the environment the environment consists of all those uh, cameras that are in the back on the side and the front um, so all that information coming from the camera goes into the ai system and it determines so it understands the environment it takes an action let's say it tries to uh, make a reverse uh, drive and then it constantly gets a feedback from the system from the environment uh, is it too close to the uh, to the to the curve is it uh, is there are there any other cars in it so all of that is the reward that you saw in the reinforcement learning so some of those techniques that we studied in the, in the reinforcement uh, learning are applied in the self parking cars uh, so that's a fascinating field lots of uh, car companies are looking to uh, this expertise you know people uh, engineers and, and and scientists who are uh, specialized in 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 this type of learning algorithms and apply them to uh, this this particular area drones another um, classic example of uh, ai ml application uh, drones for surveillance right uh, places where you cannot send a human being uh, maybe in the middle of the ocean you want to uh, go do a surveillance and see whether there is any ship in danger and then with all the covid 19 lockdown uh, many of the deliverable deliveries right the, the food deliveries or contactless deliveries um, so in some countries uh, such as here uh amazon delivers through drones uh, they come and drop the pack the 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 package in front of your home and that's all done through drone so imagine the complexity of that uh, ai system right it has all the information about your uh, uh, cameras about where, where it is the velocity the speed the wind angle uh, the positioning so lots of uh, sensory information uh, from the drone comes into the system as an intelligent agent and the intelligent agent constantly takes action and reads on the environment learn from it and then correctly performs the output so so this is another example of a, of an ai medical field uh, no need to say um, with all the uh, shelter in place uh, lockdown situation we are in many doctors are now trying to do the telemedicine right the telemedicine uh, is another example of uh, of an ai ml Uh, it knows your uh, history then it also takes some pictures and then tries to analyze and say yeah you may have this particular disease and then it kind of hates the uh, the doctor in uh, in that in the diagnosis uh, the the second area is medical records right there are uh, let's say if you are in a city let's say chennai uh, so many patients medical records and if you want to now uh, do an analysis and say you know, how many people uh, have got this particular disease um how have they uh, progressed in the last few days so all of that the mining data mining uh, uh, systems they use ai and ml in the background uh, to provide that useful information because it learns uh, from the past experience so these are all some real applications another one is um, algorithmic trading uh, you all heard about the the stock market you know people can trade uh, trading these days is manual 
but if you want to make a million stock trading it's humanly impossible uh, to make a, to make a trade like that uh, except a computer so the, the the term for that is algorithmic trading so there are a lot of um, uh, finance industries and, and trading companies are looking for uh, smart ai ml engineers in in, in implementing those uh, those trading uh, algorithms uh, even your personal finance right uh, let's say if you are uh you you have a budget uh, at home you you get your income uh you have your expenses whether it is for food or uh, uh shopping uh, telephone education whatever it is all of your spending habits uh so the personal finance uh, software uh, are also implementing ai so that they can understand from your behavior of your uh, spending and then they can offer you some some advice in terms of um, how to save more money and so on so that's another one the last one that is also near and dear to me uh, is arts and music uh, as you know uh, arts is a fantastic uh, field and including music uh, where our human brains uh, are doing wonderful things and um, one area that uh, that i was just reading up uh, in cornell university uh, there's an active research where uh, the computer science uh, students are trying to create um, a computer generated music composition um so as you know uh, we have you know music composers uh, ar rahman and nilay raja there are so many uh, great legends uh, they have created uh, wonderful music they composed uh, what what they have done is uh, the 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 university students they have taken a million of these uh, uh, midi small uh, compositions fit it into an ai system so it learns uh, all the notes and variations in in the tone and and the volume and everything it learns uh, from the system and then it creates a, a brand new composition that uh, no human has uh, has created uh, so so i think the ai ml is going to is going to revolutionize the the arts and the music industry uh, you will see that uh, there will be a lot of people who will compose music uh, without having to have a lot of background in the in the literature itself or even the existing musicians uh, can create um, uh, different flavors of music all through ai and and ml uh, algorithms and of course the last one is um, uh, you, most of you or some of you would have used google news right uh, google news is another example of a uh, ai uh, system where it learns from your behavior are you interested more in politics or interested in entertainment or science history um, so the the the, the newspaper uh, delivery electronic newspaper delivery system uses your behavior and predicts what needs to be delivered so i think i've just given some examples again like i said uh, these uh, these are just to inspire you that uh, there are so many areas uh, ai ml algorithms that we just learned uh, can be can be applied and uh, the list is uh, just uh, too long to 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 list in a, in a webinar um okay in this slide uh, we talk about um, what are the companies right the companies uh, uh, who are doing work in ai and ml uh over the last um, uh, five years or so uh, this industry has become very very mature i would say and uh, uh, as you know the like i like i talked about the 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 neural networks and the algorithms they are all based on probability and statistical uh, algorithms uh, regression techniques and like bayesian techniques uh, so all those uh, the numerical analysis programs they are very compute intensive right we all know Uh, any number crunching uh, is very intensive in 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 cpu and and memory uh, so our traditional uh, laptops and and smartphones are not um, really set up to deal with uh, large ai ml algorithms so this is why uh, artificial intelligence ml algorithms are today run on the cloud um, so and we know uh, the three major uh, cloud leaders right uh, that is google amazon and microsoft all three of them have ai ml Uh, software packages uh, that you can go and and download and use it today uh, i mean this is what i said uh, as uh, uh, engineers and 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 uh, students uh, you are really really fortunate sir one uh, second sir yeah. one second rahul kumar you are presenting please stop anu yeah, please I... check whether sars uh, yeah his uh, screen is visible ma'am yeah yeah you stop presenting uh, you stop rahul kumar or you remove him okay okay ma'am yeah. yes sir you can continue sure thank you madam yeah i got a notification saying that i was not presenting but now it is back thank you anu madam for for confirming that 
so the three um, uh, the three cloud providers uh, they are the leaders today right we all know google amazon and microsoft uh, they offer uh, wonderful ai ml uh, software packages free of charge uh, so we will take a look at uh, one of them right after this presentation we'll just i'll just walk you through uh, where you can get started like uh, engineering students it's nothing like uh, yeah i went to a class but i don't know what to do with it after that Uh, so i want to make sure that you will uh, you will have an opportunity to to go through that but each one of them they provide um, uh, a framework uh, an ai ml framework uh, they all have something in common they kind of simplify and abstract these uh, these algorithms as i told you the algorithms are very complex uh, not any uh, developer uh, computer science developer or software developer uh, can go and implement them uh, overnight so but all of them uh, they had been made very simple easy to use so that means they, it helps the engineers focus on the application uh, so if you want to build a you know face recognition uh, software uh, or if you want to build a license plate recognition that's a classic one that we use in one of our projects actually at igl uh, we take a camera uh, present a bunch of uh, license plates and then it will recognize um, so all of them uh, could use a package like a tensorflow Amazon calls it SageMaker Neo, and uh, they primarily use it for IoT devices for predictions. Uh, Microsoft has a package called Cognitive Toolkit. Uh, it has a deep learning framework. Uh, Microsoft has its own um, uh, model, a descriptive language called BrainScript, uh, appropriately named the BrainScript. Uh, of course, their own services like Bing and Skype uses that. Um, but um, so I would say, uh, if you are really interested in Uh, and getting your hands dirty with uh, with uh, with software, and you want to play with it, uh, I would say TensorFlow uh, would be a great place to uh, to to start um, uh, to start your work. Let me see. Okay, so uh, so far we have learned about you know history of AI. Uh, what are some of the learning algorithms? Uh, what are some of the applications? And who are the companies who are providing all that? uh some of you must be wondering you know what can i do you know how can i uh, get into the field uh, so i would say uh in my view uh, engineering students uh, i kind of classify them in three at least three buckets uh, one of them is uh, uh, super duper in math your your math skills are extraordinary and you love math uh, you'd like especially probability theory uh, statistical analysis and and uh, uh, linear regression models and stuff like that and uh, theoretical computer science so all of them come under the theoretical computer science so if you're pretty good at theoretical computer science uh, that's one one area where you can you can build uh, the next generation machine learning algorithms because that is what is needed and you can build the next generation ai models uh, because only you can build those and this is uh, this is a very rare breed of people uh, who are extremely smart and in, in theoretical computer science and uh, a lot of them uh, will be grabbed by google amazon uh, facebook and and other companies because this this skill set is very 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 rare um, so the middle one uh, they are the, what i call them as ai developers or engineers uh, this is the most important layer because these are the folks uh, who apply ai and ml and solve real life problems so using applications so uh, so it's smart use of the models whatever algorithms that uh, this group has created so if you are interested in in building applications if you are interested in solving uh, problems using ai this is where uh, you want to be uh, in fact uh, 90% of the ai jobs uh, fall in this category uh, because there are so many applications and and markets that uh, uh, ai and ml needs to uh, needs to be applied uh there is definitely a shortage of uh, uh, of ai engineers uh, uh, in this field so this is the reason why when when uh, when dean madam suggested ai ml uh, i felt it was really good because uh, the college is really doing a great job in bringing you the awareness so if you start earlier on in your first year itself start playing with these uh, applications by the time you graduate you would become uh, really an expert in in this field and that is what is needed in the industry so i would say 80 to 90% of the uh, of the students will be in this category of course uh, there is definitely uh, a bunch of folks in uh, i'm sure that you would relate uh, people who are interested in electronics and hardware uh, so that's a third uh, group of uh, students uh, there is definitely a role for you in ai as well 
they are called the AI enabled chips. So as you know, in software, uh, give you for example, computer graphics as an example, it started out as a software, uh, then it went into graphics chips, right? So NVIDIA and, and Microsoft, uh, they all started building computer graphics in a chip. Um, so today, uh, we are very fortunate to have Intel, NVIDIA, and, um, and IBM and others, they are building AI-enabled chips. Uh, so basically, they create uh, uh, separate uh, processors, uh, CPUs, uh, that are pretty good in, 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 in solving the, um, or in, in implementing the AI algorithms or ML algorithms. So if you are interested in hardware, uh, if you're interested in designing chips for, uh, for, for computers, this is an area that you may want to focus as well. But in either case, I would say, uh, as a first year uh, graduate student, undergraduate student, I would say start here. So you will have a very good idea of what the frameworks are, what applications are, uh, get, get more experience in terms of building your own applications using, uh, let's say TensorFlow. Then depending upon your, ex your uh, interest uh, in the future, you can move on to theoretical computer science or you can get into a hardware based for, for AI. Uh, so I thought this will be a, a good way to, to, to take a look at and say, what can I, how can I contribute uh, as a first year student uh, into this field, uh, start from the, from the middle. That's what we will do in a minute. Um, I think these are just references, uh, what I've used in the, in the webinar. Uh, I'll share the presentation with, uh, with Dean Madam. Um, so you can get a copy of that, and then uh, a lot of it is also available on on the, on the internet, and then you can you can go from there. So so I'll, I'll take a short pause and see if you have any questions on what we have covered so far. I'd like to spend a few minutes on the on the TensorFlow uh, website itself uh, before we before we wrap up the webinar. <laughs> Any questions, please one by one unmute and ask. Sunny Kumar, you need to ask any question. If not, please mute your mic. Sunny Kumar. Anu, I think you can mute him. Yeah, I'm also taking a look at the, the chat also, madam. So I'm seeing yeah. some questions coming in there. So uh, it's so robot yeah. work. Yeah, yeah. robot. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think um, uh, robot robotics is definitely an area uh, where artificial intelligence and machine learning is directly applied. Uh, a small variation of it is nothing but the the the, the drones that I talked about. Yes, uh, artificial robots are uh, really needed, uh, especially in very um, uh, um, hazardous condition. Like if you, if you're in a nuclear uh, uh, plant. Uh, you can't send humans in there, right? You want to send robots. And yeah, definitely AI and ML plays a major role in, uh, in fact, that was the first um, uh, application of robot uh, of AI. Uh, when I was in, in grad school, uh, robotics was the first implementation of, uh, of AI. Uh, great question, yes. Any other questions? Good morning. I want to know how can we apply AI in the field of education? Oh, fantastic. Uh, that's a very nice uh, question. Uh, education, definitely uh, one area that I can think of is, you know, tracking a student's uh, progress, right? Um, so, yes. so one area, uh, for example, let's say a student, you can take, you know, elementary school student or college student, uh, when the student starts from the day one, how are they progressing in the first week? How are they progressing in the second week? How was their progress in the last year? What were the problems that they had? So feeding that information back into the loop teachers will benefit a lot uh, by understanding, okay, this is the history of the student and how the student has been progressing in certain areas, whether it is in a particular field, field like whether it's math or, or reading or writing or social behavior uh, or anything, hearing any one of these attributes uh, that are needed for education, you can categorize them and you can train an, a model uh, for a particular student and then that model uh, can can be can be learned over a period of time as it as it as the student goes through that uh, that learning process. So think of um, uh, I mean in colleges we have this concept of a teaching assistant, right? Uh, the, the 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 graduate students will be helping the uh, professors as teaching assistant. So an AI program can be a virtual 
teaching assistant um, thank so you that, sir definitely uh, i think that's a great question uh, as we are in a very unprecedented uh, uh, situation uh, education is definitely impacted uh, the most and uh, i'm definitely excited to see i'm sure that people will 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 come up with um, uh, innovative ways of bringing in ai and ml into education uh, if that helps uh, uh, teachers like yourself uh, i think that'll be wonderful because um, i think we we all talk about uh, all the uh, trouble that all the frontline workers in in medicine field go through uh, education has uh, has taken a big hit across the globe right and then this is the yeah. time for uh, uh, technologies and company to step up to the plate and help the educational field and bring the innovation and make the teachers life easier right uh, how can we help them uh, do their job better i think uh, that's a wonderful question yeah there is a lot of uh, uh, innovation that can happen in the in the field of education using ai okay thank you sir Certainly. very good and wonderful session Please send people. Some questions also. are there. Uh, Start, sir. What is Question. the role of AI in fishery sciences, marine research, biodiversity? Yes, certainly. I think uh, the yeah. I, I think anything that um, I think about a fisherman, right? Uh, how do you how do you model? How do you simulate a, a fisherman, or how do you simulate a, a, a marine biologist? I think I gave the oceanographic uh, example for my PhD thesis. all the uh, work that was done by an oceanographer manually uh, was converted into an ai based system so likewise uh, when the microbiologists in the fisheries when they collect data uh, they could be collecting a bunch of data uh, in in their area around the area around the globe so all of that information how do you uh, learn from it how do you uh, predict what type of uh, impact uh, that uh, a particular condition may have on the on the marine life of uh, in a particular area so all of that uh, research uh, can be enabled through through a through a ai system that that understands the 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 history behind how it happened and then it can predict and it can say depending upon uh, the way it is going you know 3 uh, months from now or 3 years from now this particular uh, life in in the in the in the marine field is at risk or uh, we need to focus on this particular a species in the, in the marine biology uh, because we see the trend uh, that it is uh, it is dying so or uh, this has an impact on certain things um, so it can alert uh, the marine biologist in, in a number of various uh, areas where uh, without that it will be difficult for them to 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 adapt to the situation when that uh, when that situation comes any other questions Okay, so I'll take uh, just two minutes, uh, madam, if if it is okay uh, to. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, uh, it's almost eleven uh, uh, o'clock, so sir, I'll just take. Sir, I got some questions in the chat box, sir. Okay. Maybe after this, you can answer. Just we can go through the sure. software, and then you can just have an answer. Yeah. Yeah. Is cloud safe for our information? Okay. Uh, so uh, there are certain uh, topics that uh, i would probably avoid answering because uh, uh, it is outside the scope of the webinar uh, the cloud safety is is a controversial one so i would i would uh, i would uh, avoid answering that question so anything else let's see what else uh, uh, ai ml in 5g networking ah that's that's an important one yes um so basically what is happening is um uh, 5g as you know uh, is uh, is a it's a combination of fixed wireless uh, network it uh, it has two con- two attributes uh, it is faster than 4g clearly that is why it is called the 5g uh, but the more important thing is uh, 5g networks they they kind of um, mix the wireless uh, communication as well as the wired communication so you'll be able to uh, start making a call with your smartphone then when you come to your home you can transfer it to your pc uh, or you can transfer it to your tv uh, so things like that are possible only through 5g and uh, what the mobile operators are doing for example reliance in india uh, they are they are deploying 5g network and they are also deploying uh, 
uh, AI ML based system to understand the subscribers behavior. You know, how often do you uh, make calls only from your smartphone? Uh, how often do you transfer the call from your smartphone to your TV? So all that information uh, is gathered and then depending upon that, they can give you a better uh, subscription plan. Uh, so all of that is based on AI. Um, so, so there is literally uh, every field that we can think of uh, is going to be is going to be benefited from from AI in a positive way, and and 5G is definitely in that in that space uh, uh, for that question. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Um, the one uh, information, sir. The feedback link is posted in chat. Folks, so I request the participants to fill that before they leave. Ma'am, uh, Shubhashri, ma'am, any other uh, thing you want sir, to speak? Small presentation. Let me let us go through that. Sir, yeah. you are giving on the tensor flow. Yes, I'll just talk about two minutes on that one. Yeah. Wanted, uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. Let me do that. Let me do yes. that. Yes. Yes. Okay. So let me share. Uh, let me see. I think the way I do that is. Share the Chrome tab. Okay. Please, one of you, uh, maybe Anu, Madam, confirm that you are able to see my TensorFlow screen. Okay, sir. I'm checking so far. You, uh, yeah, it has come. Okay, very good. Thank you, Madam, for that. So uh, basically, uh, you go to TensorFlow.org. Though it is an open source uh, software, this is developed by Google. And uh, if you are a JavaScript programmer, there is plenty of um, uh, JavaScript samples that are available. I think, uh, as uh, Subhashree Madam indicated, uh, we at IGL offer uh, JavaScript programming uh, projects. And uh, so this is one of the reasons why we picked JavaScript as, the, as a programming language. Uh, TensorFlow is very friendly for that. So if you go through the basically, it's, it's nothing but an open source library to help to, to build and train the machine learning models. So, so basically, uh, this is a great place to start. If we scroll further down, uh, here is a place where you will see you will build your very first neural network. So if any of you are interested in, OK, I've understood what AI ML is, but I would like to build my very first neural network, this is the place to go. OK? So what they have done, uh, they have taken about uh, 60,000 uh, clothing uh, objects. So it could be a t-shirt, uh, pullover, your shoes, all kinds of shoes. So they have collected about 60,000 60, of them. Uh, this is a publicly available image database. And uh, so they created a neural network model uh, with this information. And uh, so this is the very first place that you would want to do. So this, you train a neural network, you basically classify these images into clothing and the sneakers and shirts. What, what happens is at the end of this, uh, you'll be able to uh, take this uh, image, uh, train the model, and then you can, you can present a, a new image and see how it predicts. Uh, so you can, give a, you can give a shoe uh, to the train model and see whether it predicts a shoe or it says it's a t-shirt. So, uh, so this is a great place to do that. So if you click on that one, uh, here is a little bit more information on uh, how you do that. They give you sample code. Uh, you can download the, the the software. You can play. Uh, you can run them on your laptop, and uh, so it it'll, it won't take you a lot of time. So basically, this guide uh, tells you how to train a neural network uh, with this type of uh, uh, image classification. And the way they they do that, uh, they have, um, for example, this is the remember the the duck uh, example that we looked at in our presentation. So so they have labels for different classes. So T-shirt is label zero, and one likewise bag is eight, and ankle boot is uh, label nine. So first, the very first step in the neural network modeling is to is to label, uh, like the way we saw uh, duck in the presentation. Uh, every one of these objects will have a label, and you go through that in in your program. Uh, they call it the explore the data. Uh, the, like I said, there are sixty thousand images in this in the set, and uh, once you do that then uh, you pre-process the data. Then you input all the uh, data into the system. Then you train the model, uh, build the model, train the model. So they'll, they'll walk you through the steps in this uh, website and uh, compile the model, train the model. Then once the model is done, 
then you can do the prediction so you will see the prediction i'll go to the prediction i'll also send keep the uh, i think the presentation already has a pointer to this uh, website you can take a look at that but what i want to show you here is uh, how the model is predicted uh, this particular ankle boot right so once uh, once the model is trained when somebody is presented with this uh, your model will say 80% probability that it is an ankle boot so so about 20% it is unsure uh, so a lot of it depends on type of image that you present so you can play with this uh, in your in your computer here is an exa- example of a sneaker it's only 57% Uh, that it is confident that it is a sneaker and then the, the remaining percentage it thinks that it is some other some other object so so it's a very uh, very easy one uh, you can you can uh, go through that offline and uh, so if anybody is interested in uh, building your very first neural network on your on your computer and and start playing with it uh, this is the place to to do and then of course there are plenty of uh, video tutorials on on tensorflow uh, they also have tensorflow for android Uh, if you want to do it for your smartphone there is a uh, there's a shorter version of it um so if anybody is interested in in doing that please start with uh, tensorflow at igl we have projects that are also based on uh, tensorflow uh, so if you're interested we can we can talk about that later as well okay so that concludes uh, my short uh, uh, review of uh, tensorflow uh, madam i think i'm done with that as well Uh, okay sir so anybody would like to give any feedback you can unmute and you can just give just to make it interactive let the session be interactive anyone can not be okay but hello okay yes. if no one else i think anu we can conclude okay ma'am yes. thank you sir thank you very much for this informative session on artificial intelligence and the machine learning thank you also for that extra information that you've provided on machine learning i would also thank our dean dr n s shubhashree madam for this wonderful opportunity also i thank all the participants for their attentiveness and i request all of you to fill the feedback form that has been provided in the text box message box thank you all thank you sir thank you well, definitely madam i really appreciate so, it thank you madam for for uh for organizing or, or or coordinating please go ahead madam you want to say a few words then i'll then i'll say mine please yes sir ahead. yeah even i would want to thank you it was a very good session actually i think uh, many students will uh, use this and uh, it is only as a, uh, i always uh, suggest that is uh, what i can say i can just focus on one point the outcome so the reason behind doing all these things is not to just gain name or something it is just for the students benefit they have to use get uh, yes. used to this they have to take the essence of what we have done and uh, this is the request i place for all the participants so please don't leave it here please take it forward and thanks a lot sir thank you absolutely madam i think you you said it right i think that is the right spirit that uh, we both have uh, college as well as igl we want to make sure that the students benefit from it uh, they use this information do something with it and learn something with it and and make a uh, make uh, make their uh, college work a little bit more uh, important and interesting and uh, maybe build a career out of it i think this is uh, this is very good uh, so again um, anu madam thank you very much for um, uh, for coordinating uh, the the meeting uh, subhashi madam uh, dean madam uh, thanks a lot uh, for all of uh, the support and the opportunity to uh, to have igl present uh, this this webinar and uh, so though there are many questions on the chat forum uh we'd be more than happy to answer in an email uh please do uh, do not hesitate to send an email to to any of us either kritika madam or myself uh we'd be more than happy to answer any questions related to this topic thank you once sure, again sir sure. thank you so sir. we will uh, share you all the uh, things so that uh, anybody is interested uh, they can contact so that we can uh, take it to the next stage sir definitely madam i think that will yes, be yes. one yeah. yes sir yes
so thank you all thanks a lot thank you anu very good coordination thank you ma'am thank yeah, you sir yeah. thank you thank you all bye now thank you thank you sir thank you okay have a good day thank you sir thank you bye now